this question um, pertains to the use of the heat flux equation and is an exercise where we show that energy is conserved. So heat lost by a warmer object is transferred to a colder object. That's the premise of this problem. Or Q1, Q loss is equal to Q gain. But in, in um, well that's, that's what we, we're going to talk about in the second question. In the first question, it's a simple um, conversion of a certain amount of fructose is, is found in an apple, and we're trying to calculate the food energy value of that amount of fructose. So we're told that there's 16 grams of fructose in an apple. And we're also told that fructose contains uh, 2,800 kilojoules per mole of energy. So we'll find out how many moles the 16 grams of fructose is. That many moles. We multiply it by the number of kilojoules per mole, and, the, and then we convert it to joules by multiplying 1,000 joules per kilojoule. That's how many joules there are in 16 grams of fructose, which has the formula C6H1206, and most monosaccharides. And then we convert from the joules into food calories, uh, into food calories. Food calories have a big C calorie. So there's 4,184 joules in a uh, dietary calorie. And that converts to 59.7 calories. So 16 grams of fructose contains 59.7 calories of food energy. Second question, we're told that two, two things are mixed in the calorimeter. 150 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius is mixed with 121 grams of copper at 104 degrees Celsius. When the, two, when the system equilibrates, it reaches a temperature of a final temperature of 30.1. And then they provide us with the specific heat capacities of the two substances. So in the first part of the question, we're asked to find out how much heat is lost by the water as it cools down from one, from, uh, sorry, how much heat is gained by the water as it warms up from 25.1 to 30.1. We enter that into the heat flux equation. Q is equal to mc delta T, where m stands for mass. C is the specific heat of water, delta T is the, the temperature change. Notice how I always put it so that you get a, a positive value for the temperature change. And, and we can deal with the side dimensions after if we want. If a, if, if a process is exothermic, you get uh, a negative value of Q. And if a process is endothermic, you get a positive value of Q. But we're not concerned about the sign dimensions right now. All we're concerned about is to find out um, what is gained by, by the colder object and how much is lost by the hotter object. So there's 3.14 times 10 to the 3 joules of heat gained by the water. The copper, on the other hand, cools from 100 degrees down to 30. Its heat capacity is 3.385 joules per gram degree Celsius, and there's 121 grams of copper. That means the copper has lost 3.27 times 10 to the 3 joules of energy. Uh, you'll notice there's a tiny discrepancy. Normally, you're supposed to have that the Q loss is equal to Q gain, but you see there's a slight difference between these two numbers. That discrepancy, which turns out to be 1.39 times 10 to the 2 joules, is attributed to the fact that the calorimeter, which is made of styrofoam, which is an insulating material, nevertheless absorbs a little bit of heat. It ends up absorbing 140 joules of energy. So we're asked to calculate the heat capacity of the calorimeter used in this particular experiment. So the calorimeter itself has a five degree change in temperature. And uh, the heat flux divided by the uh, change in temperature is going to give you the heat capacity to the calorimeter, which is, uh, in the end, 28 joules per degree Celsius. We're then asked to find out just how much of a difference that would have made. If all of the energy that was contained in the copper had been transferred into the water, what temperature would, would the water have achieved? We're told it achieved 30.1. But if that extra 140 joules of energy had gone into the, into the water, what would, it, what, would been, what would the temperature have been? So we again reapply this heat flux equation. Now we're looking for delta T. We know all the other factors. We know that we know the Q, we know the M, we know the C, we just don't know the delta T. 
So we take that original amount of energy that was in the water and divide by the mass of the water times the, uh, sorry, we take the heat energy that was contained in the copper, not the energy that was contained in the water. That was the, that was the heat loss by the copper. What happened in the original experiment is that some of that energy was went into warming up the water, and only 140 calories went, uh, 100, 140 joules went into warming up the calorimeter. Now what we're assuming is that all of the energy went into warming up the water. The end result is that we get a delta T of 5.223. Uh, the delta T is made up of temperature final and that is temperature initial. We know the, temp the initial temperature is 25.1, so we solve for TF we get 30.3. So in the end, it only makes a difference of 0.2 degrees. You notice that we had 30.1, it actually turns out to be 30.3. The amount of energy that goes into warming up the calorimeter is negligible since it only makes a difference of 0.2 degrees Celsius.